So, my lightning talk is actually on a pet project of mine called EmberScript. And EmberScript is Ember JS infused <coughs> copy script. Now, some people might think I'm crazy for treating this essentially a framework specific language or a JavaScript MVC framework specific language. But bear with me. Um, I want to start with a meta question that is like, what is EmberJS? Well, normally, when people think of EmberJS, they think of the application layer, they think of a router, they think of view, they think of handlebars. But really, one of the cool things about EmberJS is it's actually pretty modular. Um, it's really built from the bottom up. At the bottom, this is kind of a simplified representation of EmberJS's module structure. At the bottom, there's what's called metal, which has bindings and computer properties and the run loop. Above that, there's the object model and enumerables. And at the very top level, there's modules for the router, views, handlebars integration, templates. For the purpose of this talk and just EmberScripts, really, it's just the bottom two layers that we're talking about. What's nice about this is it's actually a much smaller footprint. Um, EmberScript doesn't depend on all of EmberJS. Um, it's just these two modules. And before I get going further, I also want to talk what's the motivation behind building a language around these two Ember modules? Well, I mean, first, there's a little bit of team involved. Like, for me, if you've used Ember, you'll notice there's lots of get and set calls. That's how property access is done in Ember. Um, there's a good reason why that's done. But for me as a developer, like, I would much rather just use dot syntax notation, just property dot property. And the same for setters. And computed properties. Um, when I created my computed properties, I define my computed properties, I have a method body, I access other properties, and at the end of the computed property definition, I go back and I explicitly indicate which properties it depends on, which is really, it's kind of redundant. It's actually the properties I just put in the method body, in most cases. And then the second big thing is a coffee script I'm calling it a CoffeeScript impedance mismatch. I love CoffeeScript, but there's a little bit of a conflict with Ember conventions. For instance, the CoffeeScript class keyword, um, you really can't use that with Ember. Um, <coughs> and you know, coming from a CoffeeScript background, that can be somewhat enough. You can, but it's, there's, there's ways around it, but it's not ideal. Um, and then the next thing is indentation. Like, top, one of CoffeeScript's, I don't know, love it or leave it, is that it has significant white space. And some of Ember's conventions kind of force you to make that a little bit messier. For instance, computed properties, you need to wrap the function in parentheses and then do a dot property at the end, which is a little bit messy when you're coming from a copy script background. So I built Ember script, and it has language supports for all these things and more. So this is, this is Ember script. Um, it's actually a live editor. On the left hand side is, uh, is Ember script. Um, and the right-hand side is the generated JavaScript. Um, and so, as you can see, like this is a slide representing the object model. Um, class compiles down to Ember, Ember's class concept. There's a new keyword mixin, which actually maps to the Ember mixin, um, Ember mixin construct. And these can be composed in intuitive ways. And there's a super keyword. There's everything you come to expect, you know, from an object-oriented language. And accessors. I said before I didn't like using get and set. In EmberScript, you don't have to. Um, by default, um, JavaScript's or the dot property access notation maps to Ember get, and the same with setters. So, and you know, this works with setters. It works with this. It works with complex properties that you're accessing. And one of the nice things about this is that Ember's get and set, in most cases, behave almost exactly as the normal JavaScript um, property access. So really, when you're using EmberScript, it really doesn't matter. Like, you don't have to think about it. When you're accessing a property, it could be a computed property. It could be a normal property. It could be whatever. You don't have to think about it. It just works. And then, of course, if you really want to, you can actually fall back down to um, JavaScript's property access. And computed properties and observers, I introduced a new syntax here. Um, you see, like, the header display method. Above that is, a, is an annotation, um, a plus computed, and then the dependency specified on the right. That compiles down to um, a normal EmberJS computer property that's defined in the same way. But the beauty of using annotations is it gives a nice declarative way of um, defining computer properties that doesn't really mess with CoffeeScript's uh, significant white space. And I mean, and you can also chain them. Oops. Okay, I add volatile, and that gets added to the method. It's just a nice declarative way of doing these things. 
And what's really cool is because EverScript is a compiled language, there's even cooler stuff you can do. And this is what I'm most excited about. This is actually the same method as the last slide, but note the method is declared using a tilde instead of a dash, the header display method. <coughs> and what this does is it automatically turns it into a computed property. And moreover, it actually, at compile time, looks at the syntax tree of the method and determines the, determines the dependencies. So in this case, it knows that I, it knows that I want to watch content.link because it's used inside the method body. And it's really easy to do this. It makes coding in Ember a lot more, a lot really nice. I'll just do another like, contrived example. And this could just be. And boom, we have a computed property. Actually, I'll add a space in there just for. So here we have a computed property that depends on two other computed properties. And it automatically infers the dependencies, the first name and the last name. And it just works. So it makes it a lot more concise when defining computer properties. How do you deal with if statements and dependencies? Um, so, right, so if there's an if statement, and I, I got to call it, this is experimental. Like I'm actually working on pulling this out and creating a separate module that actually works outside of EmberScript. But um, for, for if statements, it would actually just check both. They would both be dependencies. So you mind if I can? Like, yeah, go ahead. So people ask us all the time, why, don't, why do I have to declare my dependencies? Why can't you just determine what they are? And uh, there are frameworks that actually try to do this, but they have massive bugs. And the reason is because of if statements. It's basically because the, you have no mechanism of, so the idea is you would evaluate the function and determine what keys were called for, right? But you could have if statements that, you could have branches that you never actually run. So how do you, you're never actually getting the full dependency, you know, the, all the dependent keys. So. <coughs> So that's the nice thing about EmberScript. That it's one of the things that I'm excited about. Is since yeah. it's compiled, you can just yeah. If you get compiled, like yeah, you don't like you said, you don't actually have to walk, you don't have to invoke the method. At yeah. compile time, you just look at the entire syntax tree, and if the if the property is access, accessed anytime anywhere in, inside the method, um, it's added as <coughs> dependency. So yeah, because it's not runtime. And so getting started with EmberScript is super easy. If you have a Rails backend, you literally just have to add this gem, and it'll just work. Um, any file with a .em extension will be compiled, go through the EmberScript compiler. And it's, it's really lightweight too. Like, you don't, it's not a big commitment. You could just have one controller in your entire Ember app, the EmberScript. Maybe you just want to try it out. You can, have, you can live right side by side with normal JavaScript and CopyScript. It's really just like a tool that you could use to make your Ember code more concise. And this is just another um, it's kind of an analogy that I, wanna, that I hope comes to reality. Um, so I'm not sure if you're a Rails developer, you're used to the notion of like Haml and CoffeeScript. And this is where I want to drop another project, um, Emblem, which is an attempt to make handlebars, or a, a Haml-like syntax on top of handlebars. So it's kind of like the Haml, and you know, we actually, <coughs> talent, we actually use both Emblem and EmberScript, and it creates a much more concise code base. And that's pretty it, that's pretty much it. I, I also got to drop CoffeeScript Redux, which is a rewrite of the CoffeeScript compiler on which uh, most of this code is based. Or not based, but I use that as a, the, the start. So um, that's it. And that's actually nice because it has like really good support. For, it's a really nice rewrite of the CoffeeScript compiler. So source maps are already there. Um, all, this, all the goodness that a language needs is already there. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you.